Alright guys, so I'm excited to bring this next project. I've had this one in the works for a little while, but anyways, this is the spool I got from work. So you can see it's it was a big spool, it had wire on it. And it was just wasting away, so I figured why not try to make it into a pedestal for a deer? So I made <clears throat> I'm in the process of mounting my one deer which is a pedestal wall mount. And I've seen a few pretty cool looking mounts out there. Um, there's a couple of them. I don't know if it's skull hooker that has a tree that you can put three different mounts on. So I figured this would be a great one to put it on. So that way I can kind of stagger them. Maybe put this in the corner of, our, of a trophy room, something like that. And it should be it should be pretty good by the time I'm done with it. So, as you can see, it's got this writing on it that I'm gonna have to sand out. Technical difficulties. So I think that pedestal will go right here. It'll block this, and then I'll figure something else out. I think I might take old boards from pallets and see what I can do with those. And then here on the side, I might take this this uh, torch, go up and down this, and see if I can bring out the color in this. So it's kind of a work in progress, kind of rigging as I go. So I'm gonna go ahead and I guess start with some sanding and then I'm gonna take this router, go around the edge, kind of keep, make this a little bit smoother. That way it's not as uh, not as dangerous if you brush up against it or something like that. And hopefully it turns out pretty good. All right, so I've got this old Porter cable rotary sander. I got something that's a little bit more coarse on there for, to start, just to try to get some stuff off there. Um, this thing's probably older than me, so it's not like I'm working with anything that's all that great. You could probably do it with your hand if you really needed to. But I'm going to use the tools since my dad let me use them. And it uh, should make things a little bit more bearable. So let's see what it looks like. get a paper towel go clean that off and then uh, I'm gonna take this off and I have a more fine grit that I'm gonna go back over and also I'm gonna get real close to those bolts and those washers with this just do it by hand all right so now <clears throat> I'm gonna take this and you can see the dark rings around here I'm gonna try to scrape them off with my hand All right, so now <clears throat> I'm gonna take this and go around the edge, see if I can't smooth this out just a little bit. This is also a porter cable that's a million years old, so you don't need any new tools by any means.
Alrighty. That looks pretty good. So as you can see, I can get out of the way of light. So I tried making this as even as I could. And then I'll come back around. So I'll come back around. And sorry, I'm losing light. But I'm going to come back with this uh, <clears throat> more fine grit sander, sandpaper on this orbital sander and hit that again. So that should be it for the top. Nice and smooth now. Feels great. I'm gonna try to figure out what I'm gonna do next. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is take this torch. This is just trial and error. I'm gonna take this torch and go down, see if it brings out the color in some of these boards. And if it does work, I'll keep doing it. If it doesn't, I'm gonna stop. So let's see what it looks like. I just got done using the torch and um, putting my finishing touches up on the, the middle section and I think it I really like how it turned out but I need to go ahead and take the router to the bottom section and to the bottom of the top section just so it looks a little bit better round it off um, and then I'm gonna hit it with the sander I'm unfortunately out of light but I will bring this inside to do some of the um, standing and whatnot. I have a separate room that I can actually do stuff in. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this going and then I'll bring it back in and I'll catch up with y'all. All right guys, so as you can see, I'm inside now where there's some better light. Please don't pay attention to the mess. So I'll take this off. All right, so I went through with the torch and I just went lightly over it, tried being as even as I could, and it really, I really like how that looks. That patina looking color. Look dark. I might go back over again, and then I'll seal it with some polyurethane when I'm done. And then I took the router over the bottom, and then the bottom of this too. So now I'm going to go ahead and flip it over onto the top. This is all clean. So I also took the router inside of here to try and just round it out just in case this is showing anywhere. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with these yet, but I think I'm going to take this dark wood stain 
that I've got. It's a Rust-Oleum wood stain. I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna go ahead and take a brush, put it out, try to do it as even as I can. Take some uh, a cloth, go across it, clean it up, and then we'll let it soak, stain, and then uh, we'll see how it looks. And then when I'm done, I'll come back over the top with the polyurethane. And that'll be that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. I'm going to take this shim, kind of mix it up a little bit. You can see that dark color. So I think that'll look nice in combination with what I've done down there. I'll take this brush. Yes, I had a window open. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry for another 24 to 48 hours. And then I'm gonna come back and put that poly on it. And that should be about the finishing touches. All right guys, welcome back again. Um, I had to let this top section dry and then I also painted the bottom section. I'll go ahead and take this off the stand. So as you can see, I went ahead and uh, stained this and then I rubbed it down, smooth it out. And then I was debating on leaving this, but I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, I went ahead and stained it just to make it look a little more even. Uh, but I smoothed this down with this little block. Oops. <clears throat> this little block, it's just a little rough. So I smoothed this down. And it's got a nice finish on it now. I'm gonna have to continue messing around with the bottom and everything. But, so far, everything's turned out great. Nice and smooth, and then I'll put some polyurethane on it to seal it. But, I think it's turning out pretty dang good in my opinion. So as you can see, I've got the bottom painted, like I said. Get down here. So I've got the bottom painted. So what I'm going to do is take this block and just go around and smooth this out. So I get some of the burrs and everything that just get hung up on it. And it also takes a little bit of the stain off that I have already on there. This is okay. I think it's uh Gives it kind of more of a rustic look in my opinion. So I'm gonna go ahead and get to rubbing this down and then uh, I'll clean it off and help it prep it to put the powder on it. Um, 
So now I'm gonna take the shop vac. I'm just gonna clean up the dust that's around it so that way nothing gets stuck on it when I go to apply that poly. This has also been able to dry. This one, the top section is probably dry for give or take 72 hours. Um, and then the bottom section, I gave it 24. So that seems like it's the minimum. It seems like it's holding in pretty good. The stain got in. I'm not too awful worried about the bottom either because what you're really gonna be paying attention to is the side and the top. Or hopefully the deer that are up on top of it. So, I'm gonna go ahead, get the shop back ready, and then I'm gonna just clean up the dust and everything around it, like I said. So I prepped the surface, like I said. Now I've got this uh, polyurethane spray. I'm gonna use a little bit of it, or try to use this one up. I do also have uh, actual paint on one, um, but I have to go get a brush before I can put that on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this, see what I can get. And then it says that roughly two to three hours, come back, sand it down, apply another coat. So we're just gonna go from there and I'll tell you all how many coats I put on the thing. So that's that. I'm gonna let this sit for two or three hours. I'm gonna come back and then I'll sand it down again with this block that I used previously. And uh, put another coat on it probably. And yes, I do have ventilation. There is a window open right here, so I'm aware. Because uh, you don't wanna be in an enclosed environment with this stuff. It's in an enclosed environment that doesn't have ventilation. So I'll see y'all in a couple hours. All right, y'all, I'm back. I'm glad to announce that finally that Skull Hooker mini trophy tree has arrived. I'm gonna go ahead and show y'all. I put it together already, so here you go. So as you can see, this one came in a nice brown. Um, I ended up having a deal running, so I'm gonna go ahead and use it. It says each arm can hold up to 35 pounds, so that should be plenty for a shoulder mount, any deer shoulder mount that I've got. And then as a, you can see, these just slide out like so. And you pop them back in there, and then there's a spot for a set screw. So I've already got one up in there. And you can see these plates come out as well. So you can go ahead and put that on the back of the deer and just slide that right over like so. Put a set screw in it, shouldn't go anywhere. It also has these nice recessed portholes so you should be able to get a screw head down in there just fine and that'll help hold it a little bit better but I like how it looks especially with the brown it also comes in a black um, and it seems like it's very sturdy so I'm gonna go ahead and see how much it weighs um, it's not on the box anywhere that I can see so I'm gonna test it with this little scale I have for fishing so, I've got the set screw in here, so hopefully that, that doesn't come out. I'm gonna turn this thing on. It's zeroed out. Alright, 14.69 pounds. There you go. So as you see, it's got plenty of weight to it um, for anybody that's skeptical about it. It's not too much to where if you were putting it on a table, you'd have to worry about all that extra weight. But it distributes the weight very well, and this is nice, solid metal. I'm going to go ahead and situate it how I think it's going to need to go. And then I'll explain some of the other things I'm going to do, and then I'll set it up in the corner of a room, put some deer heads on it, and show you all what this is all going to what the idea is all going to come together and look like. All right, y'all, so I'm very excited for this. So I'll go ahead and show y'all that this 
has two holes in the center, as you can see. So this plate, on this mounting plate on the bottom is perfect to where I can hopefully line it up just about even. In between these, I'm just probably gonna eyeball it. Line it up about right, something like that. And that should, as you can see, cover these holes. So you won't even know they're, they're there. And then it also comes with the mounting hardware for if you were to, if you were to want to mount this, uh, mount your deer to it with these screws, it does come with some, which is nice. Um, it comes with a whole bunch of these little set screws with nice tabs on it so you can really cinch them down. Because nobody wants to put a deer up there and have the feeling that this is unsteady and it could fall off because I know there are some horror stories out there of deer falling off the wall and busting an antler or something and you don't want to go have to go to a taxidermist and have that fixed. Unless it's me. Just kidding. So, I think I'm going to go ahead and figure out about where I want this and then I'm going to screw this down and I might just kind of have a fake screw in there so it's even just to satisfy me. I got it lined up and I'm going to go ahead and screw these down. If that is hard, you know, all this extra screws. So, let me go ahead. I think I'm just gonna eyeball it. It looks good to me. I went ahead and tightened these down earlier. So they're nice and tight. But like I said, this one is gonna be a dummy hole, I think. That's just gonna make it look like that. That way it satisfies any of my OCD about this. Now, going to see Get that just a scotch that way everything seems rather centered so I'm gonna go with that I mean, I ain't going anywhere. Tighten that down. Nah, that ain't going nowhere. The only gripe I have about this little tr trophy tree is that everything is tightened down and these don't line up. So I have to back this off just a, just a hair and get that exactly where I want it so it lines up, but that's the only gripe I have about it which is having to do with the machining which is okay i mean i'm not going to really pay too much attention to it well probably only me though to pay attention to it i think the deer is supposed to take all of the attention anyway so hopefully nobody pays attention to that so i think i got the decorating part um down for what i'm going to do uh it's not completely done we'll see what the girlfriend says but Pretty much, I just had this five point side from a deer. I don't know where it came from. Uh, I, well, I take that back. I don't know where the deer antler actually came from, but my girlfriend's twin um, gave it to us. So shout out Kendall, thank you. Um, so I have that, and then I have this really cool looking license plate. Uh, I like how it's nostalgic. It's 40 years old this year, I mean, that says 84, that says 83, so I know it's got to be somewhere in there at 39, 40 years old. And then up throughout, I took some barbed wire. There was some old fence that was down back in the woods, I remembered. And just took that barbed wire, kind of ran it up around that, just to give it a little touch. And then I kind of want to get some sort of cedar board or something that looks like it came out of a barn. Uh, I'll probably end up getting something from a pallet and then seeing if I can finagle it to look somewhat like a fence. And then that, I think that would be pretty cool. But anyways, this is just my DIY old school throwback deer. So I'm going to go ahead and take this stuff off right here. 
I'm gonna leave that on there. And I'm gonna carry this out and put it in the living room uh, before the woman gets home so I don't get in trouble. And then uh, I'm gonna put the deer heads on it and I'll show you all the final results. extremely happy with how this turned out um, I do not have the third deer up here quite yet um, he's I'm still working on him that's the deer that I have in my other video my big one I plan on putting him here or I might do a switch with a couple others I haven't decided quite yet but pretty much as you can see the barbed wire ties in pretty well I like this old license plate I think it's a nice touch with the antler on there and I just feel like it tucks into this corner really nice um, as you can see it's pretty versatile you can definitely do it with two I think that looks just fine it'll uh, it'll look even better I think once I have a third one up there um, but I wouldn't obviously I wouldn't use this thing if you were only gonna mount one I guess you could these come off but they have a threaded piece right here so I would recommend to put at least two on here just because it looks a little bit better don't pay attention to that falling down um, so as you can see I can move these deer around wherever I want like so this one swings way out and it's all sturdy I mean it feels it feels as tight as can be I'm not worried about anything falling that's pretty much it I hope you all enjoyed the video that took quite a while but it was well worth the wait and I just it just goes to show you that if you have some sort of idea and you can picture it in your mind go for it um, this is not exactly how I figured it would turn out but this is about as close as I could get it and I'm very happy so please like and subscribe you can follow me on Instagram at going with Gus and as always gotta get going